Amber is considered an organic gemstone because just like other organic gems like pearls or coral, it comes from a living thing. And in this case, that's tree resin. One of the other really cool things about amber that a lot of people don't realize is that in order to even be considered amber, the stone has to be at least a million years old. Here's everything you wanna know about amber. Amber is not only one of the oldest gem materials, it can actually be up to 120 million years old, which is incredible, but it's also one of the oldest gem materials that's been used as personal ornamentation. In fact, ornamental amber objects have even been found by some archeologists to predate some of the oldest civilizations on earth. Some of them have dated to even around 10,000 BC. And keep in mind some of the oldest civilizations like Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, they date around 5,000 to 3,000 BC. As I mentioned, amber is an organic gem because it actually starts out as tree resin or sap from very particular trees, usually pine trees, and its chemical composition is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, with trace amounts of sulfur. So when people weren't using amber historically for personal ornamentation, they were actually burning it like incense. And it actually does have a very pleasant and sweet smell when you burn it. When amber is not at least a million years old, which is the amount of time it really needs in order to harden into something that really resembles gem material, we call it something totally different. It's not considered amber, it's actually considered copal. Keep in mind that even though amber has been hardening likely for millions of years, it is actually one of the softest gemstones on the market. It's still only a two to two and a half on the most hardness scale. So this means if you are gonna keep amber in your collection, you do need to keep it very, very safe and protected even while it's in your jewelry box. I would wrap it up additionally in a soft cloth or keep it in one of those little soft bags because it can basically be scratched by pretty much anything. Definitely other precious metals or gems in your jewelry box but also something as simple as glass or even dust. You should also know that amber can very much oxidize over time. So over time when being exposed to the air can cause amber stones to really darken. So it can become a deeper, darker red or even blackish color, and it can kind of become cloudy and lose its transparency. And unfortunately, polishing it will not help. That actually kind of makes it worse because polishing it often removes that hardest layer on the outside of the amber stone, which makes it more vulnerable to oxidation and exposure to the air. For many people, the amber that they've seen all kind of looks exactly the same, that kind of yellowish, goldenish color with a very waxy appearance. But in fact, amber can have a lot of different appearances, and some of it, of course, is very rare and expensive, and it does enjoy a very thorough collector's market. People who really love it and who are really looking for these rare and special pieces. Amber can actually have a very whitish color, which is very fitting, of course, for the Pantone color of the year for 2026. But in those traditional hues those kind of yellow orangey red colors the most valuable are a very transparent kind of vibrant red very gemstone like followed by more of a golden orangey color with the least valuable being a true yellow. Some of the most interesting amber are stones that can actually show fluorescence and this will give the amber stone a greenish or an even bluish appearance. These are very rare and expensive and very much sought after by gemstone collectors and of course amber aficionados. A lot of amber does have that resiny polish luster which is going to give it that kind of plastic like look but a lot of amber can also be polished to a more vitreous finish. This is going to give it a more glassy and kind of gem-like appearance. Definitely something that you're looking for in a more high-end piece of amber jewelry. On the opposite side of the spectrum, something we don't see very often, but is to have amber that has a completely opaque finish, the total opposite. And especially in those kind of reddish orangish colors, it presents very much like coral in jewelry. It can be very beautiful and very interesting in various designs. So it can be kind of a lucky find and definitely something interesting to add to your collection. Another rare find with amber is to cut very transparent or those very opaque stones that I mentioned into faceted stones. So this is something that's gonna look very much like a regular gemstone. And again, in those orangish reddish colors, it could look something very similar to a garnet. And even those kind of collector stones like the green amber can be faceted and that can be very beautiful as well. Again, not common whatsoever, but if you find it, it definitely is kind of special. Now, if you're out there shopping for amber and you're trying to distinguish which pieces of amber jewelry are going to be more valuable, more expensive than kind of your run of the mill amber pieces, consider the lower end of amber pieces. They're gonna have very irregular shapes. So 
an amber beaded necklace, for example, all the beads on the strand are going to be kind of very organic, irregular shapes. They're not going to be very high transparency. They're going to have a little bit more of that cloudy finish. And the colors are going to be more yellowish and brownish and definitely not very well matched. So when you look at all the beads again on that strand, you're going to have a bunch that are all different kind of colors and not very uniform. On the other hand, when you're looking at very high-end amber jewelry, which can get very expensive, you're going to have that very high transparency stone and it's going to have more of a brighter orange or brighter red color. Definitely going to have more of that gemstone-like appearance and again, if you have a necklace for example, even a beaded necklace or something that's even bezel set in a precious metal like silver or gold, all of the matching in the necklace is going to be very close to perfect. So think of it just like a very high-end pearl necklace. All of the beads on the necklace or all of the stones are going to be very similar in color, similar in transparency, and just have a very uniform appearance and look to them. If you also happen to have some of those famous plant or even animal inclusions, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in a minute, or of course, if you have the green or blue amber or very gem-like faceted amber, those factors are all gonna make the amber a lot more expensive. Thanks to the fame of Jurassic Park, of course, one of the most famous characteristics about amber is its ability to preserve insects, plants, and even larger animals like lizards and even frogs in its tree resin and preserve them from millions of years ago. So when we find amber that have these very natural inclusions in them and they are attractive and in good quality and it has, you know, an entire, let's say, flower or even, you know, insect intact in the amber and it, it's high transparency and we can see it well, it really is going to make the cost of the amber go up significantly. Again, with a lot of collectors, these are exactly the types of pieces that they're looking for because it's totally unique on the gem market. We really don't see this with any other material, of course. It's like preserving a true piece of history. So whereas our run-of-the-mill amber cabochons that are you know, very standard, don't have any inclusions, but might have very basic transparency, basic color, they could be really only a couple of dollars per piece. These amber pieces with these flora and fauna inclusions in good condition and that are attractive could well go up to thousands of dollars per item. A couple of things to consider if you are on the market for interesting amber pieces is that even though they can be quite inexpensive, they still are treated quite commonly. So this is something you kind of wanna make sure that you're looking out for because it's something that in my opinion, I would avoid just because you can find really great amber on the market for a good price. So there's no reason to really settle for the ones that have been treated. Similar to emeralds, amber is often heated with oil and this kind of helps the oil to kind of fill in any air bubbles and it makes the amber look a lot more clear, a lot more transparent, again, just like emeralds. However, there is a side effect to this treatment and when it's heated with the oil, it can create what we call in the trade a sun spangle. And you can see it here, it kind of looks a little bit like confetti or maybe even a firework. Um, but it's definitely a telltale sign of heat treatment. If you don't mind the look of it, that's fine, but it's something that I personally would probably avoid just because you can find lots of amber without this effect. Along with the heat treatment, you'll also find amber that has been dyed. So they'll dye it, of course, those colors that are a little bit harder to find, that true red color, a little bit darker amber, because a lot of impression is that the darker the amber is, the older it is. And of course, you definitely get dyes in that kind of rare color, like the green and the blue. Definitely something you want to keep an eye out for. Lastly, again, even though a lot of amber is not that expensive, there are actually a lot of imitations, especially from the 70s and 80s when backlight uh, plastic jewelry was really in style. That's one of the biggest imitations with that beautiful amber color. And you do get a lot of other kind of glass and plastic, other resins that are imitating amber jewelry. They are quite easy to kind of notice that they aren't true amber. Um, and you'll even get insect inclusions and other inclusions in this plastic jewelry that have really just been placed by hand. So just something to keep in your back pocket that it is out there on the market. Most of the commercial amber that you're finding out there in the market is coming from the Baltic Sea region. So it's very popular to be found in Russia, Lithuania, Poland, Denmark, Germany, 
and it's traditionally mined there but it can also be found very much so just on the shores on the beach and there are lots of times during erosion and bad weather when they get loads of amber just washing up on the beach and it's very popular for the locals to go and pick it up. Other major sources include Myanmar, Alaska, Mexico, and the Dominican Republic and the Dominican Republic is actually an amazing source for some of those more rare colors like green and blue. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions about Amber, please feel free to put them in the comments below and be sure to check us out on Instagram at Winston Gems and Jewelry.